Hello and welcome. This is a video for Required Practical 2 for AQA GCSE Science Triple Science students only. This is called Microbiology. So the whole point of this experiment is to investigate the effect of antiseptics or antibiotics on bacterial growth using agar plates and measuring zones of inhibition. What do we mean by use of aseptic technique? Well, this is when we use a technique preventing the growth of or contamination by unwanted microorganisms. Measuring zones of inhibition. This is about measuring the area where bacteria have been killed. This will make more sense in a moment as we go through the practical. Here is a Petri dish and inside the Petri dish we have something called agar gel which contains living bacteria. The gel has nutrients to help those bacteria to grow. And we have a lid which we'll place onto the dish to prevent any bacteria getting in or any escaping. If we were to look at our dish from above, we could see here that we've got a paper disc soaked in antiseptic right in the center there. We've got an area of live bacteria in the kind of orangey color. And in the lighter color there, we've got what's called the zone of inhibition. That's where the dead bacteria are. You could tell that the antiseptic has killed the bacteria nearby the disc. The bigger the area of dead bacteria, the more effective the antiseptic is. The area is roughly a circle, so we can use area equals pi r squared to measure the area of that circle. The method. First, we wash our hands, not was our hands. We wash our hands with antimicrobial soap and we disinfect our workspace. We use antiseptic to do that. We then take an agar gel plate and mark the bottom, not the lid, but the bottom with our initials and date using a permanent pen. So here's our dish. We would flip it over. We would divide the bottom into three sections and label them one, two, and three and we would make sure we keep the lid on to avoid any contamination by unwanted microorganisms. So if we look at the bottom of our plate, we can use a permanent marker to divide it up and to label it. So we've got a date and our initials on there, and we've divided it into three sections. We will label those one, two, and three, because we are testing three antibiotics or three disinfectants. We can then turn our dish the right way up. We would open the lid slightly, as little as possible, and we would use sterile tweezers to pick up a disc, a paper disc that has antiseptic one, and we would put it on the dot in section one. There's our disc there. I haven't actually drawn a dot in section one, but we could put a dot in the section to see where to put our disc. Close the lid as quickly as possible. And then we would repeat with antiseptic two and three and note which section has which antiseptic. So there's our dish. Again, if we take a top view, we can see we've got labels one, two, and three, and we've got our three discs with our antiseptic on them. We would then secure the lid with tape. We would make sure we don't seal the lid completely so that air can get in and allow aerobic respiration. We would incubate, in other words, keep warm at 25 degrees Celsius for about 48 hours. And there we can see our dish. We can see that we've got zones of inhibition for those different antiseptics. We would measure the diameter of the zones of inhibition for each antiseptic twice, in other words, in two different uh, sections and calculate a mean diameter, and we would use that to calculate the area. So let's see what we mean by that. Here's our ruler. We're measuring antiseptic two. We would measure one diameter there and one diameter there, and we would take a mean of the two diameters so we can get a mean radius. We would use the area to decide which antiseptic is the best. Remember, the bigger the area, the more effective the antiseptic is. Control variables, these are things that we would keep the same. We would keep the same area of our paper disc and the same concentration of antiseptic. And finally, risks. We could grow by accident, we could grow pathogenic bacteria, and our plan to reduce this risk is to use aseptic technique, which we defined previously, 
and we would incubate at 25 degrees C, not at any higher temperatures, for example, 35 degrees C, which would be a much more optimal temperature for contaminating bacteria to grow. So let's take a look at a set of results and what we would do with those results. So here we have a table where we can record our results. We've got antiseptic 1, 2 and 3 labelled on the left hand side and we've got two sections for recording our diameter in millimetres. So if we look at our antiseptic number 1, here's our diameter reading number 1 which we've got as 14 millimetres and our diameter reading number 2 which we have as 16 millimetres. The mean for that would be 14 plus 16 divided by 2 which is 15 millimetres and to work out the radius we would just divide that by 2. So that's a radius of 7.5 millimetres. The area is calculated by pi r squared so if we did pi times the radius squared we would get a value of 176.7 millimetres squared. We could do the same for the rest of the results. So we have two diameters for antiseptic number two and then the mean and the radius and so on for antiseptic two and a set of results for antiseptic number three. Do pause here and work through the calculations to make sure you get the same answers as we have there just to make sure you know how to do that. Next we would draw our conclusion. Well, we could see from our results that the best antiseptic is number 2 because it has the largest zone of inhibition. It has a zone of inhibition of 346.4 mm squared. Number 3 is the worst antiseptic because it has the lowest zone of inhibition, the lowest area of dead bacteria, and that's 78.5 mm squared. Are there any improvements for this method? Well, we could make sure we repeat each antiseptic at least three times and take a mean of those results. We could test on other types of bacteria as well. So here we've only tested on one type of bacteria. And if we were using this as an antiseptic, we would want to know other considerations. For example, what effect does it have on health or what effect would it have on pets? And does it have any interaction with other cleaning chemicals? Here are some exam practice questions. Pause here, give those a go, and then we'll go through the answers together in a moment. So it says, scientists investigated the effectiveness of five different antibiotics on bacteria. They grew the bacteria by incubating at 37 degrees. Antibiotics A, B, C, D and E were used in the investigation. The figure below shows the results. And there we've got a labelled diagram showing the different parts of our results. And it says, describe two aseptic techniques that should have been used in the investigation. Well, the first thing you could say was to disinfect work surfaces. That will get you one mark. We could say we tilt the lid slightly when adding the discs, or tilt the lid a little bit only when adding the discs. That will get you another mark. We could talk about sterilizing the Petri dish before use, or any tweezers that we use or forceps that we use, passing them through a flame before use. Any one of those will get you a mark. Remember, there's a maximum of two marks. Number two, what is the purpose of the paper disc with no antibiotic in the figure above? This is for one mark. Well, there's two possible ways we could say this. One, as a control for comparison, or to show the results are because of the antibiotic. That will get you the mark for that question there. Number three, scientists suggested that antibiotic two and five were the best. Why did they suggest this? This is for one mark. The answer is because those two antibiotics killed the most bacteria or had the largest zones of inhibition. That's what you need to get that mark there. Question number four. Describe how the results in the figure above could be used to obtain a quantitative comparison of antibiotic two and five. Well, in question number three, we use what's called a qualitative measure. In other words, we just look to see how big those areas were. But when we talk about quantitative values, we need to put numbers to those values. So the answer for that is to use a radius of each clear part to calculate the area. This will give us a numerical value for the area and make it easier to compare. That's what we need for the mark there. Question number five, the scientists incubated the bacteria at 37 degrees Celsius. 
students in school laboratories incubate bacteria at 25 degrees Celsius. Explain why scientists use 37 degrees Celsius, but students must use 25 degrees Celsius to incubate bacteria. 25 degrees Celsius prevents the growth of bacteria that are harmful to humans, or you could say growing at 37 degrees Celsius might encourage the growth of pathogens. One of those would be required for that mark there. So that's it, required practical number two for triple science students for microbiology. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.